Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 72. Now, John the Baptist is born. They named the boy John. Everyone, oh, 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 no one named John in your family. And they go to the turn to his father. And his, his father opens up his mouth after nine months. And Zacharias speaks. And with his mouth being closed for nine months and ability now to speak. We've been reading the prophecy. We've been reading the praise of God by this man. And you got to wonder if God giving you the ability not to speak for nine months. And then the ability to speak, what would you say? Would it be for God? If God were to take away your voice, what would the last word be? For God or for what? And yet we got to realize the Bible says in Matthew, Every word man shall give account thereof. God is recording every word, idle word, every kind of word, all the words that we say. We'll have to give an account. That's not under the blood. Verse 72. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. And that was to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, the children of Israel, before they entered the land. And that, that promise was a land grant. That promise was, I will curse them that curse thee. I will bless them that bless thee. If you adhere to my covenant of Abraham, I will not cut you off. If you obey what I tell you to do, Later on with the law, Exodus 20, they are God's people. They are nations above all nations, the apple of God's eye. America is not number one. Israel is. And even in Israel, in their sins today, they are still God's people. But he speaks about them in Hosea as a, as a woman who, who's gone after whoredom. God will marry her again. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. Now, we got some scripture to look at here. This oath that is spoken about, Genesis twenty two sixteen. Genesis twenty two sixteen. Zechariah knew the Bible. So how come he didn't recognize an old man and an old woman unable to have a child? And before you go picking on Zacharias, how many times have you dealt with somebody about their soul and then three days later remember, oh, if I only said that. It's the same thing with us. In Genesis 22, verse 16, we'll start in verse 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham, Abraham, out of heaven the second time. Second time. Angel of the Lord speaking to a Abraham. The oath that Zacharias is talking about. And said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. The angel of the Lord is Jehovah. For because thou hast done this thing, go back and read chapter 22, the wonderful gospel story of the Lord Jesus Christ, and has not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, 
and thy cities, uh, thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. God is going to bless the children of Abraham. God is going to multiply the children of Abraham. And Abraham lives in a place that is surrounded all of his enemies, except for the Mediterranean Sea. Even that, there's one little spot, the PLO. From Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, can you imagine how many Jews there have been on this earth to April 24th, 2015? And the rapture would happen today. You would have a minimum at least seven years of Jacob's trouble. We don't know if the tribulation starts right after the rapture. It may be eight, it may be ten, it may be fifteen years total. And then you've got a thousand year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine how many Jewish people will be born during that period. I guarantee it would be beyond the count. Hebrews 6.13 See the Bible is about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus. From cover to cover. And if it's about any particular people, it's about the Jewish people. He came onto his own Jewish. He's not a colored Jesus, and he's not a American uh, actor Jesus. He's not a handsome Jesus you see in the picture. You know, when the rapture happens, a lot of Christians are going to be shocked to find out that's not what Jesus looked like. Yet we are given some details. There may be a case according to Revelation that we're going to see a white-headed Jesus. With all the troubles and problems and situations he's put up with since the resurrection. Since this church age. But Hebrews 6.13 For when God made promise to Abraham Because he could swear by no greater. Who, who is God going to swear greater? He swore by himself. God, something like this. I, Abraham, I swear by myself. Now that's an oath of all. You can't beat that. You absolutely cannot beat that when God says, I swear by myself. Saying. Now, look over here. Genesis 22, who spoke? The angel of the Lord. According to Hebrews 6, watch this. Saying, surely blessing I will bless thee. That's what the angel of the Lord said. Hebrews tells us that was God. Surely, blessing, I will bless thee. There's the blessing. Multiplying will I multiply thee. That's exactly what we read in Genesis 22. What is the oath? What is the blessing placed upon Abraham? A blessing and multiplying. You want to try to find an original Babylonian? You can't. People talk about the original Greek. It ain't the original Greek no more. Today's Greek is far from what the original. You can't find the original Greek. You can't find, really, truly, I believe, an original, absolute, genuine, probably North American. Somewhere in the line with the Europeans and the French and the Germans and all that, 
it's it's been mangled. But there's one race of people who's gone through the ages and survived all the attacks of the world, you know, dwelling amongst their enemies, who is still on top and is still here and can say, we are Hebrews, we are Jews, and we even speak the same language. And we are giving birth to Jewish babies every day. No other. Genesis 24 7. Genesis 24 7. Zacharias was no dummy. We got to get that. He knew something. I know we went to the lesson. He didn't recognize Abraham and Isaac, uh, Abraham, uh, Sarah and Isaac. But he knew. Verse 7, chapter 24. We'll start in verse 6. And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bring not my son hither again. He's talking to his, his servant. He's going to get a bride for Isaac. The Lord God of heaven. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. God. The Father and the Son. Which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, which spanked unto me, and that sweared unto me, Hebrews, Genesis 22, and that sweared unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. So there is a land grant promise. And it's carried over kind of to Isaac. You're going to go find a bride for my son Isaac, and this is going to pass from Isaac with his wife into a child that he's going to have. But God spoke to me, saying, saying this is your land. This is your land. This is my land. That, that's, a, that's a phony song. It's all Satan's land, but there's one land that's God's land. And he gave it to one person. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He said that's not one person. That is one nationality of people called the Hebrews, the Jews. And notice it's Abraham and not Abram. Ishmael is of Abram. He's not of Abraham. I'm sorry, Mr. Magazine, that you're at the you're at the, the the checkout. I don't know if I could say your name. But it's time to tell you that you're wrong. Ishmael and Isaac were not of Abraham. They don't share the same father. Ishmael was of Abram. Isaac was of Abraham. Ishmael was of Hagar. Isaac was of Sarah. Hagar was just a mistress. Sarah was his wife. They're not the same. There are 12 tribes. There are 12 princes. Princes. They're not the same. 26-3. Chapter 26 of Genesis, verse 3. Chapter 26, verse 3. And we'll start in 2. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down in Egypt. They never listen. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. You want to stand before the United Nations and tell them about that land? You want to go to PLO and tell them about the land, what the Bible says? Do you know you hold in your Bible in 2 Samuel the land title deed given to David that is Mount Zion, which is Jerusalem, which is where the dumb of the rock is? 
Your Bible holds the title deed there that you can bring into any courtroom. Proper courtroom. I should add that note. Sojourn. Dwell for a time or temporary time. Why? It's going to have a new earth for them. And I, God, will be with thee and will bless thee. Genesis 22, Hebrews 6. I will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed will I give all these countries. He's in the land. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Look at verse 1. And there was a famine in the land before, besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac, we're talking to Isaac. The oath that God gave to Abraham, he passes over to Isaac. No me. And do you realize what I'm saying today from the Bible will upset a particular race of people and a particular religion of people that they may want to kill me? Because I am telling you they are not God's people unless they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ today. If they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they are a son of God just as much as I am a son of God. But as far as the call of Abram, it's a lot different from the call of Abraham. And as far as the call of Isaac, it is not Ishmael. The only way the Arabians and the Ishmaelites can get into glory today is by Jesus Christ, the shed blood, by the gospel that Christ died for our sins, was buried, it was buried according to the scriptures, and on the third day he arose again according to the scriptures. What must I do to be saved? To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. That is the only way an Arabian, an Ishmaelite, or a Jewish person can get into heaven today. Now as far as the land, as far as a particular people, it goes from Abraham to Isaac. That's an oath that God has laid on it. Deuteronomy 7, 8. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 8. The last book that Moses writes. I can open up the pages. We've come a long way since Abraham and Isaac. The twelve boys have been born. Grown. They've been in Egypt. Deuteronomy 7 8. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath that we're talking about, which he had sworn unto your fathers, isn't that what Zechariah said? There you go. Has the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand? And redeemed you, brought you back out of the house of out of the house of bondmen, Egypt, from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Verse twelve. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if you will hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God will keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which He sware unto thy fathers. Now he's added the law, and law with being circumcised. It is passed on from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, twelve tribes. We are out of Exodus. They are almost in the promised land, going to be led in by Joshua, the last writings of Moses. And he says, you're God's people, and the blessing is still there. Now you got to obey the law, but it's still there. No Ishmael around. No American around. Psalms 105, verse 9. And we are reading from the books, except for Hebrews, the books 
that Zacharias would have. Psalms 105, verse 9. Zacharias would have copies or a able to get these copies and read. Psalms 105, verse 9. Which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, the father of Israel, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for everlasting covenant. Look at that. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Israel. Plain and simple. You can't read anything else in there. If you could get the United Nuts in New York City to understand that. You want a worldwide blessing? You go to the World United, uh, United Nations World Assembly, whatever they call it. You get them to believe that Israel are, is God's people and they are to bless Israel. They are to protect Israel. They are to guide Israel. They are to put all their strength upon Israel to help them. If any nation were to attack Israel, that nation would be eliminated and destroyed and wiped off the map within 24 hours with all the world helping. And God, God would have to, by his promise to Abraham, I will bless them that bless thee, God would have to bless the world. If this people came up against Israel and just attacked them, sent one missile in there, and the entire world gathered and fought that nation, and destroyed that nation, and they say, God, we did that because of your people to protect them, God would have to bless them all. You know what America is being blessed today? Bible-believing Christians are praying and serving. And we still... We're on the edge. We're on the borderline. I don't know how far we are. We still help Israel, but we've had helped Israel in the past. England became a destroyed nation when they told Israel, you can go back to the land, but the Belfort Declaration, we got to give um, the Jordans, you know, we got to give them rights too. That's where they destroyed themselves. And then they went with another Bible against the Bible that they printed in their nation. Jeremiah 11.5 Jeremiah 11.5 We're talking about something that God not just God's Word, understand me now we hold God's word from Genesis to Revelation. I believe this is the word of God. Inspired by God, written by God, used by man. This is the word of God. But you gotta understand when we're talking about right now, Genesis twenty two, Hebrews six, Genesis twenty four, Genesis twenty six, Deuteronomy seven, Psalms one oh five, and now Jeremiah eleven chapter uh, verse five. You gotta understand this is not only the word of God, this is God say, I swear by myself. This is above God's word. That I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto your fathers. There is what Zechariah said. To give them a land flowing with milk and honey. It's about the land. Shark eats a bunch of people on, on a beach in Florida. Ooh. Army tanks move into Jerusalem. Wide speed uh, disease spreads through Africa. Oh! Israel launched missiles into PLO. Nile River floods. Mississippi River floods. China is going to get a new emperor. Earthquake in Jerusalem. There is war in Syria and they're attacking everybody and we just don't know what's going on. The president's got to make a decision. Should we go there and fight or should we just let them fight out themselves? Bomb goes off in a cafe in Jerusalem. 
Why does every news story go back to Jerusalem? Why does every story go back to Israel? I would closely say, and I don't know how far I can, uh, maybe I'm pressing it. I would most likely say in your most important top ten newspapers in the world, I would safely assume and, and put every single issue, every single day, there's, there's, there's a story in there about Israel. How many stories will you find in there about Florida? How many stories will you find in there about Colombia? How many stories will you find in there about some little country that no one knows in Africa? All the land property and all the land in the world, everybody looks at one piece of land. Even the Christian, even the churches, even the follow church. Oh, we got to go to the Holy Land, take a pilgrimage for the Holy Land. If you go to a school, in a public school, and I've been told by a missionary this. If you go to a public school, if you were to go to their library, libraries, I don't mean public school library, if you go to the library, if you were to look at, at a map of the Middle East, there is no Israel. You won't find I-S-R-A-E-L. That's not on the map. They do not recognize or do not want to have anything to do with that land connected to the Jew. And God said, I will curse them to curse you because I put my oath, I put my name, I gave that to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And not only did I give it to them, I'm going to give them children and they're going to fill that land up. They're worldwide. It's the best land. What other place did God say milk and honey and back to Luke chapter one? Verse seventy two to form them uh, no uh, verse seventy one back to seventy one that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Well, who's the enemy? The people that want that land. To perform the mercy promise to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath, covenant, the oath, we saw that, which he swear to our father Abraham, our father Abraham, not Abram, Isaac, Jacob, the twelve tribes, that he, God, would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. They rejected John. They rejected Jesus Christ. Why were they shouting Hosanna when Jesus came into Jerusalem? You know what they wanted from Jesus at that moment? They wanted him to take over the Roman government. Hey, he was feeding us with bread and fish without having to go to the grocery store. We can go to him and not the hospital and get leprosy cured. I could bring my, my dead child to him and he would raise him from the dead. All we need now is freedom from Rome. And they stood there and he stood before Pilate, a bloody Pussy goo. Look defeated before the Roman government. Whipped, beaten, crown of thorns, his beard plucked. He has he's got blood and he's got that white liquid in him. And they look up and they see him and they see the Roman governor and say, well, well, you're defeated. We'll have no one over us but Rome. We'll take Rome, thank you very much. So what do you guys say? Crucify him! They wanted him to feed him. 
They wanted him to take care of his medical needs. Doesn't that sound like today, 2014, as the government in the United States, we're going to give you medical insurance that you can't afford, but we're going to give you medical, take care of all your... We're going to be Jesus. Look at all the cures we're coming up. We got the cure for this cancer. We got the cure for this. Thing. You can't afford it, but we got the cure. And only if you're a big major league ball player with all this money and, and fame and all that, Will we take care of you? They wanted Jesus Christ to get the, just to please their needs, to eat, drink, and be merry, and we shall die. And then we'll go to Jesus, and He'll resurrect us. We've seen Him do it, and, our, and the devils and all that—they flee Him. They didn't want to take up their cross, he kept telling them. He kept telling them, listen, this, this ain't going to be an easy life. And we see enemies, we see oath, we see covenant. And we see them rejecting John and rejecting Jesus. John didn't get victory over the Roman government. He ended up in jail and then his head being chopped off. And that's supposed to be Elijah? They missed the scriptures. They missed the, the first advent of who Jesus really was, the lamb. The sacrifice. That lamb that, that, that passed overnight did not have a chance. They take that lamb, and I believe it was seven days, three or seven days, I forget. They would examine that lamb. That lamb was for one purpose and one purpose only. He was going to die and burn on that fire. They take that lamb, they examine it, make sure there's no blemishes. They examine, they, they studied Jesus, and they found no fault in him. He didn't he does convince me of sin, and they couldn't. The lamb died. That, that wasn't no. The lamb, the lamb died. The lamb atoned for your sins. To them, the lamb dying was ain't gonna do nothing for us. Oh, he could done a lot for you. He'll wash away your sins. Verse 75, verse 74 again, that he would grant us that we be delivered out of the hand of our enemies. That's what they wanted. It wasn't time yet. The hand of the, the being the hand out of the enemies was the second advent. You might serve him without fear. The millennium. There's the millennium. If you do right in the millennium, you have no fear. You know, if you're innocent, you don't need fear. You don't. Why fear? If I'm sitting on my porch and I've done nothing, I'm innocent, and the cops pull up, no big deal. Unless somebody's lied about me or something. So what? I'm, He might be coming up to ask me a question about something my neighbors or if I've seen something and I don't know. Maybe hey, you know. If I see the bumper stickers on your car, then I'm just always figuring, what must I do to be saved? And you have to pick me off off the ground first, and you know. If you do right, you don't need to fear. He's telling the nation, you better do right. He's telling the people around this, this birth, this circumcision, to follow, do right. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Only in holiness and righteousness. No sin or unrighteousness. You gotta be holy for I am holy, God said. 
You can't just say, oh, I'm sorry, and then go back and do it again. You got to be truly sorry. You got to be truly wanting to quit. You got to want to seek God and say, victory. You ever wonder what happened to all the people that Jesus healed? He healed ten lepers and one turned around and thanked him. What about the other nine? Even he had. What about the nine that were with him? You, wasn't there ten? We learn that Zacharias knows his Bible. So do we. And there are times that, you know what, we forget the Bible. So do we. There are times when an opportunity that we should know something and be able to use it and we don't. Zacharias and us were human. We get brain farts. We forget. We get caught up in the moment. We chicken out. And he is speaking through the Holy Ghost in verse 67. Keep yourself in the Holy Listen, what he's saying now is not written down on paper. It's written down afterwards or while he's speaking. The Holy Spirit is using his mouth that has been closed for the honor and glory. And I have felt that. I know what that's like. Preaching on the streets, dealing with somebody, having a Bible lesson. I have felt that the Holy Spirit has come into my mouth and used it. And I walk away from that like, wow, where did that come from? I start quoting scripture I didn't know I know because I don't know it because the Holy Spirit knows it. I just read it and study it. It's remarkable what the Word of God can do. But you gotta apply it to your life. You gotta live it. You can't just read it, you know, okay, I'm done with my three chapters, we'll close it up, done. You can't do that. The Bible says, I'm not to do that, you're not to do that. And if you are doing it, you need to seek God to stop it. And the Bible says, You are to do this, you are to do it. If you're not doing it, you better seek God to do it and get doing it. You better stop walking the middle of the line, doing it, not doing it. Not doing it, doing it. Doing it, not doing it. Because that's a lukewarm Christian and that makes God sick. 